Hello everybody, my name is Super Rogue from Marquee Design and today I'm going to teach you a little bit about size coding for fantasy consoles, in particularly the TIC80 platform. The TIC80 is one of the two most popular fantasy consoles, the other one being the Pico 8 of course, and it consists of a resolution of 240 pixels by 136 pixels, as well as 16 colors, selectable from the Sweetie 16 palette. So, we're now uh, at the code editor. This can be accessed using the F1 key, but there's also a sprite editor. Here you will see the 16 colors of the Sweetie 16 palette that we are able to use for our effects, a map editor, sound effects editor, and music tracker. But for size coding, we'll just stick to the code editor for now. On the bottom right, you'll see the uh, size or number of characters used, um, and there's some other information there as well. Um, you can code inside the TIC80 editor, which is what I like to do, but you can also use an external editor and then uh, copy and paste the code inside the TIC80. So what are we looking at? This is a small and simple effect of a few scrolling diagonal bars using the default Sweetie 16 pad. So you can see all these 16 colors in its uh, full glory. Um, the TIC80 is programmed using Lua. You can use other languages, but Lua is the most commonly used uh, language for it. Um, so let me explain what's happening here. Here we have a function tick. This is our update function that's called 60 times a second. Uh, we'll uh, get our T time variable using the time command and we divide it a bit, otherwise it's too fast. And we have two forms for the Y and X axis. And for each position on the screen, we use uh, we plot a pixel there using the pix command. And the color that we are plotting is x plus y plus t divided by 8, which again results in this simple effect. So where do we go from here? So maybe uh, we'll go through a couple of demo scene effects that you might be familiar with. Uh, so let's start with a, a simple plasma. Now, what's a plasma? A plasma is basically Plotting a pixel, uh, but instead of using x plus y plus t, we are plotting it using a different color variable. Let's call it uh, q, and we'll assign a value to q. So a value can be used using, uh, for example, a sign function. So we can type mod sign here, x, and we divide it by a number, 39, and we add t to that. Um, now let's see what this does. Not much because a sine function will go between one and minus one. So we might want to multiply this a little bit. Okay, this is goes way too fast. So let's slow it down a bit. Well, that's not particularly interesting. So let's do a little more. Just add another sine function here. This time using the y variable divided by another. Um, and maybe just for good measure, add another x divided by 65. That sounds about right. So we now have three values added together. Let's see what it gives us. And this already looks like a plasma like you. No. Still the range is a bit small, so we can increase the range. And this already looks sweet because the Sweetie 16 palette is very friendly for size coding. Still a bit too fast, so let's slow it down a bit more. This already looks pretty nice. Uh, sometimes people will just add another T to it, so you also have some kind of cycling um, over time. Uh, it's all a personal preference. But this is your basic plasma effect. Okay, already looks pretty nice. Let's go back to the sweet E16 button once more. So here we actually see the colors uh, ranging from uh, black, purple to more the reddish tints, then green, then to blue, and then a couple of nice grayscale, and then back to black. So this is just really great for stuff like plasma. So the colors always connect in a nice fashion. So on the bottom, we have the uh, character counter. So there are, there are two ways of size coding on a tick 8. One, uh, like we do in the byte battles, you can go by character count, which is directly in the bottom right. Uh, or you can go for a size coded intro of 128 or 256 bytes, 
And then we go for a thick cartridge file size, which is basically a four or five byte header, followed by a LZ compressed uh, Lua code block. So this means your code can get compressed. So it requires a different kind of size coding, which, will, uh, which I'll get into a little bit later. So just going for uh, the least amount of characters, what you can do in Lua is um, assign um, an alias to a letter. So for example, I can do M is math, and then instead of using M sin, uh, math.sin, I can use M.sin, and you can see this is already taking up less uh, character space. Um, but I can also do something like this. Assign math.sin to S, and then it will be even shorter and who knows more readable as well so this is exactly the same effect but in less uh, characters um so yeah what next um yeah this is all looking pretty sweet but maybe we want to restrict ourselves to uh maybe having less colors uh, so we can modulo the color by four and it will just stick to the bottom part or modulo it by eight have the green in there or if we just want to go for the uh, the blue and uh, gray range we'll do something like this so due to the resolution you can and uh, only having 16 colors available uh, well, we don't have any smooth shade so maybe we can add a little bit of dittering effect. So uh, this is our original color calculation. Uh, let me put this just in color for clarification. So I call this Q. Oh, I already have a Q. Um, call this C for now. And C is Q times three, uh, modulo by eight. So this is eight colors. We add eight to it. Once again, looking at the Sweetie 16 palette and we are right here in our color range. So um, maybe add some dithering to that. So what we can do, I can add uh, maybe for example, just X modulo two, and we have like a horizontal dithering type. You can do the same for the vertical axis if you like, yeah, kind of a scan line thing going on, or we can do something like this. That doesn't look good, like this. And we have uh, a different kind of different. Um, but maybe we can do like a logical operation. X when uh, with end function or a XOR function. And here is the first thing that uh, looks different in Lua than you might know from C or other shader language. The XOR operator is actually this uh, tilde sign instead of something uh, like this, which you might expect. So go back to the tilde sign. You can do an X or, or just different things uh, for dittering. So, well, this is all good and nice. So let's step it up a bit. Let's uh, have a slightly uh, more complex effect. So, yeah, there's a couple of basic pixel effects that you can do. Uh, you can do a roto zoomer uh, or a floor or a tunnel effect. So let's start uh, with the tunnel. So, um, so what's the tunnel effect? A tunnel effect is something um, where we uh, have a different uh, X and Y value for our colors. That is our projected values. So our normal space is 0 to 240, or if you want to get technically accurate, it's actually this, but I, I, I find this more readable. Um, and we project uh, uh, onto a new X value, which is projected value, and that will be X, the normal X, divided by a Z value. Uh, uh, and the Y, will be um, a zero or a respective value, say 99, divided by the Z value. And what's the Z value? It's as simple as having the absolute value 
of um, y minus 68. So this happens to be half of the 136 resolution. So we'll, we'll mirror the y value uh, in, in, on the center of the screen. And we have to do the same for the x value. So we have to deduct 120 from this value. So uh, c still is nothing. So just put it on the x value. So we know it still works. So now we have to calculate the color using the projected x and y values. So we can do this using, um, normally we can use this to look up uh, some uh, value in the texture or a nice shape, but we don't have this space uh, available. So we'll have to deal with a uh, logical operation. So that can be an AND, an OR, or an XOR operation. So uh, I'm a big fan of the AND operation, so let's go from, for that. Um, so I can, could do uh, X uh, logical AND Y. Seems like something that uh, should work. But as you will see, this will result in an error. And why is that? Well, uh, the thing about Lua is behind the scenes, it will keep track of if your value is an integer value. Uh, like for example, at this point in your program, when you're just using it for a uh, for loop, this will be an integer value. But once you start doing math or division, um, it will convert to a float value. So at the point when, where am I at uh, C, um, I want to use it for a logical operation, but this can only be done on integer values. So it will throw an error because uh, I'm trying to do a logical operation on float values. So this is not happening. So a trick for this is to use an integer divide, which is like a double uh, divide sign divided by number, in this case one, and the same for the y. And now it will accept my uh, projected values. Uh, it still won't, so maybe just put some brackets around this. See if that will help. Ah, yes. So we have one other problem. Um, you cannot divide by zero. So normally this would not be an issue, but for Lua it is. It's uh, very uh, stupid. So we might just want to add dot one to the value. Uh, so we won't get a division by zero. This only happens, you can divide by zero, but once you then you want to do logical operation on them, it throws an error. Uh, it's a bit silly, but uh, it is what it is. Um, so I think I can remove these brackets. Yes, it still works. So now we can add the value t to any of the directions that we want. So in this case, we we'll use the x direction and we have our moving forward. If you think, well, these texels are a bit big, well, then change the perspective value and do maybe something smaller or multiply the x value, well, x minus times 32. Well, that's a bit much maybe. So do eight and do 199 for this until you find something that, uh, that suits your need. Something like this. Now our C value is actually an integer value. So if we want, we can either do a uh, modulo on this, like we've seen with the plasma, uh, for example, going for the blue uh, and gray values. We can experiment using different uh, logical operators. So for example, the XOR will have a different pattern. Um, or um, we could do a, um, Another logical operation on it. Um, you can do, uh, this is similar than the modulo four, or uh, which is a number that I like to use a lot, is using 11. So it will pick both the orange and the blue section of the screen 60 bit. So let's go back to that palette once more. It will pick these bottom four values as well as the values that are eight uh, above it. So this gives a nice uh, shade that you can work. All Larry looks pretty cool. We can do the same for if we want to move in the other direction. That will work as well. If you think it's too slow, we can speed it up a bit. Whatever works. So this is 
one of the basic shapes we can use for a pixel effect. Um, I think it's a nice uh, shape, but uh, we can try something different. Maybe do a tunnel of sorts, see how that works out. So uh, we try to do the same. Uh, maybe assign, maybe change up our four loops. So I'm going to remove these values, keeping the logical operation the same. Um, and I'm gonna change my for loops. Instead of going from one to uh, 240, I'm going from minus 120, plus 120, and similarly for the other axis as well. Uh, make sure to add these values to your fix function as well, otherwise it will draw in the upper left corner, which is not what we want. And we try to do the same. So this is our projected X. Uh, and in this case, we could use uh, the 810 function. Uh, whoop. Times, now normally you would do something like 128 divided by pi or mod pi, something like that. 11 will do in our case, and then for the y, we'll take the square root. So this is a distant function for each pixel to the center of the screen. Uh, see if this works. Yeah, it sort of works. Uh, this might be too large, so we can divide it down a bit. Something like this. And again, if you want to move Another axis, we do something like this for an axis. So this is what's called uh, polar coordinates. You can play with different values. Uh, some of them are more exact, but you will see, for example, a line in the top half, uh, I think 18. Yeah, so there are a couple of values that are almost uh, uh, precise, uh, or you can just uh, calculate it very precisely. Um, so yeah. Um, so this is what's called polar coordinates, uh, and this is the basis of every tunnel effect you've ever seen since the 90s. So um, let's uh, not be uh, Mr. Original here and just go for the, uh, the perspective tunnel effect. So instead of dividing our distance, uh, we will um, have a number and divide that by the distance function. This gives us some uh, one through uh, over z perspective see what this does. Again, we're running into the same problem as we had before uh, of uh, not being able to divide by zero, or at least uh, it will throw an error once you do the logical operation. So you can either do something like this, plus one. Yeah, that doesn't work. So do plus one here. And now we have a perspective effect. Just add T to this one as well. And we have something that represents a tunnel. Uh, divide it down a bit, maybe a little less perspective. So the higher the number is on this side, um, the less perspective your tunnel will have. So if you have a lower number, there's more perspective. So yeah, that's already uh, looks pretty sweet. Um, and let's see where we're at, 177 characters. So that's basically nothing. Um, if you like, you can do the same aliasing or something and get it down even more. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's try to do a little bit of size optimization. Because until now we've been uh, looking mostly at a couple of demo effects. Some of them you have maybe coded over a hundred times. So what can we do to, um, to make this code a bit smaller? Well, of course, what we can do is remove spaces, uh, enter functions, st stuff like that. We don't need the sign function, for example. Um, but maybe in this case, we can alias math to m. So we say m is math. And we can replace this with m math. And you can, in the bottom right, you can see these, uh, this number decreasing over time. Uh, we don't have to assign c. We can use this directly. So let me try to put brackets around it first, just to see that it works. Still works. And maybe we can remove the brackets here as well. Yes, we can. So 
Um, then what else can we optimize? Well, maybe the square wood function is not strictly needed. So, not taking the square root will result in a slightly higher number. So I might make this number a bit higher as well. Well, it works. That works pretty sweet. So now we have eliminated our uh, square root function. Uh, if you want an alternative to square root, this is a trick that uh, Blossom uh, taught me. Uh, so instead of doing uh, mod square root, or m dot square, this also works. Uh, I don't know how we are on brackets here, but... Ah, sorry, didn't... Yeah. This also works. So yes, this is the same as taking the square. It's a nice little trick, but in this case, we won't be needing it. Just up the number here again, and we're good. So what else can we do? Well, um, for example, we're now using the time function and um, this is a uh, built-in function for the tick 80, but we can also keep track of our own time. So in this case, we will need to assign a, va uh, a variable, t in this case, and then add dot one to t. See how fast it is? It's about the same speed. And we go for lower values or higher, depending on your needs. So, this is still smaller than uh, using the time function and ex uh, especially if, if you have to divide it by a large number. So this is a small but uh, nice operation to have. And you can see I'm already trying to stack different commands um, behind each other. Uh, yes, you can do this. You can um, like stick a letter behind each uh, numeric, but there are limits to this. For example, you cannot use uh, the value A to f, uh, which is a pity because a lot of functions um, use this letter. Uh, for example, a for loop, you cannot stick a for loop behind this because it will see it as a hexadecimal number. Um, so that's a bit of a pity. So you, we have to be careful uh, in the order um, of how we stack things. And another thing we cannot do, we cannot do another assignment here. So a is 10 will not work because it will not read the math function correctly. But we can stick it. So say that we will assign this. Uh, we have a function, CLS, for example. We can stick it behind the CLS function. But then again, we have problems with the C. So it's a bit of uh, trying different things and orders, which can save you bytes in the end. So let's see, our effect is still working. So that's pretty sweet. Um, well, another thing that we can do, right now we're using the pix function, uh, which sets a pixel on coordinate x and y. But uh, there's a cool function on tick80 that's called, well, there's there are actually two. There's a poke function, which allows you to poke in the address of uh, the tick80. Um, but there's also a poke4 function, which pokes a nibble into memory. Now, it happens to be that uh, the memory, the, the, the VRAM memory, so the screen memory is actually located at address number zero, which is nice. It's something that we can work with. So what we can do first is update these two for loops to a single one, because we both need an end for these for loops. So that's a bit much. So instead of um, having two for loops, we'll just have one that goes from zero to this number, which is um, this one for loop, and we can extract our x and y values from this loop. So x would be O modulo 240 minus 120, and y would be O divided by 240 minus 68. So let's see if this is still working. Yes, it is. So we've now limited uh, a complete 
for loop. Uh, let's see if we can crunch this down a bit further. So the next thing that we can do is um, instead of using the pix function, we'll use the poke for function. This pokes a uh, nibble into memory. So instead of having to uh, enter these coordinates and an addition by hand, we can just use O and then poke for into position O in memory. So this saves quite a bit of uh, characters. And as you can see, the effect is still working beautifully. So is there something that we um, can talk together? Yeah, maybe this T we can put behind the tick function. Uh, we cannot stick this F behind the T at zero, unfortunately. Uh, we can uh, put these here and we can put this here. And now we are down at 144. So that's a bit of size coding uh, tricks. And so we have two things. First, we are uh, getting to know the basics of the TIG80, and then we're also doing some optimization. So if you want to know more about size coding in general, or particularly the fantasy consoles, either TIG80 or Pico8, you can go to sizecoding.org. It has different sections for DOS, uh, Linux, uh, different kind of retro platforms, but also for fantasy console, both the TIG80 as well as the Pico8. Um, and it tells you all, all about the uh, virtual machine, how to set it up, um, what kind of commands are available. So for example, uh, there's a clear screen, a pix, a circle function, rectangle, line, a triangle or a print statement. Some simple stuff to get something on screen. There's a possibility on Tick80 to also set your own color palette. Uh, so if you're not satisfied with the default with 16 colors, you can set your own palette but it will cost a couple of characters or bytes, of course. Um, you can poke sound memory. Uh, it talks a bit about final optimizations, how to release your stuff, uh, and uh, discusses a couple of packers. So uh, this is something interesting uh, for most of the uh, intro competitions out there. You are able to deliver a tick file of either 128 bytes or 256 bytes in size, and you can pack this using an LZ Packers. So there are different packers out there. There's Tick Tool by Exoticorn. Uh, there's a, the original uh, Python packer, and there's also something called PackTick. All different packers doing the same thing, basically um, packing your code into a single compressed code block, as well as um, as having uh, a small four or five byte header file. There's also a Tick80 cheat sheet, which is very useful. Uh, it's also on the website. Uh, it has the layout of the memory um, and it has, it, uh, has some functions. Uh, just a simple overview of the different functions that are available and how to use it. It's also nice to uh, have that around. So back to our code, back to our tunnel. So what else can we do? Well, We've discovered, uh, our, we discussed the plasma, we discussed a floor routine, we discussed a tunnel routine. I've showed you some of the optimizations you can do. So maybe let's try to get uh, just creative and uh, see if we can actually make something, um, yeah, that is more release worthy instead of just being a single effect. Um, so uh, I'm going to combine different things. I'm going to, uh, instead of doing a pixel effect for each pixel, I'm going to use some primitives like a circle function, uh, uh, doing some print statements and getting some more cohesive uh, kind of thing going. So again, we'll start with the function tick, which is always our basics. We can get something printed on screen. Let's do a clear screen as well. Uh, I want some T. I might, I might need that. Uh, very likely, I also might need the mod function alias. So these are just a couple of basics that you can uh, you can get started with. Uh, just put something here. Um, tick. 
AD size coding rules. Uh, so maybe coordinate 90 by 64. Okay, ticks size coding rules. We might need to add a color. Put it a bit more to the left. Tick 80 size coding rules. Yeah, we're not 12 anymore, so let's just do this. Center it a bit. So instead of the 12, we can of course uh, do T. And we have some animating text here that already looks lovely. So let's uh, try to draw some circles here. I've already clearing the screen each frame. So uh, we'll start with a blank screen each frame um, and do some uh, rotational circles. So I still have a Y and an X loop, but uh, say from yeah, maybe minus 32. Um, mm, simply X. Ending for loop. Um, and do some projected x. Is x times 4. Nothing amazing. And instead of the pix function, we're using the circle function. Up, x, y. Then we need to set our radius. Uh, radius can be anything, so just let's start with 3. And then uh, a color. A uh, color can be x. x plus y. Let's see what this does. Yeah, it draws some circles. Not really spectacular. We need to add the center point to this as well. Yes. Looks lovely. Um, so, yeah, let's go with less dots. Does. Yeah. So we're drawing some circles here. Uh, let's do instead of a color value, just do a, a, a radius. So you can say radius is x. Uh, let's go with a sign. M dot sign x. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's see what this does. Nothing much because we need to add T to this. And we have different circles increasing and decreasing in size. Um, maybe add another sign function. Y. Yeah. Ranges. We can already see some progression. Yeah. For this level. So, what else can we do? So, we maybe can assign different colors. So, if we just put T in there, the color will cycle the same way as the text color. Um, maybe do some. We have a regular for loop, so we can do x, x or y plus t. That works. Sort pattern. Yeah, it already looks pretty sweet. Plus t one. A bit more cycling. Maybe slow down my t a bit. Yeah, I'm just freestyling here, people. So, um, which is uh, something you should uh, do or practice as well. I think uh, it's a nice way to get comfortable with the system and uh, have fun uh, doing it. So, yeah, maybe. Yeah, we can. Let's do some rotation. So, what's a 2D rotation? We have a projected X, which is. Uh, x times uh, cosine is minus minus 
sin and the same for the y is plus so this will give you a default to the rotation so let's do that so we'll take the uh, x times m dot cosinus um, yeah we might want to have a separate angle for this Our angle is t divided by 9, just to have it in a separate value, minus y times m dot sine of the same angle, and we do plus then this should be giving us a default rotation so let's see um, hmm? x y we're doing this um, yeah we're doing a double y there we go this already looks sweet uh, let's zoom in a bit mm. yeah times eight There we have a rotating square. Already looks pretty sweet. Uh, we can see the black color uh, coming through. So maybe you don't want that, want to avoid that. Uh, that's, uh, that's possible. Uh, maybe you just want to modulo it by eight, at eight and just stick to the uh, blue. So yeah, um, what else can we do? So we have a 2D rotation. We have some size coding rules. Uh, maybe we can add a bit of perspective to this. So we can do real perspective or we can do fake. So let's uh, start with the, the fake one first. So we just multiply this with a different value so now we multiply it both with eight so maybe i multiply it by four here and it sort of looks like a flat plane and maybe we can add like a z value to this so z will be uh, something that will stick out of the plane so z can be uh, yeah, just put it to R, see what that does. It's the same value as the color. Uh, we might multiply it by eight. There we go. That's a nice wobbly plasma plane. We do some faces. Let's take this back to 99. Yeah, that looks sweet. Maybe add another zoom factor. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, this will be our, yeah, this will be our Z value. Yep, still working. I'm going back to the rainbow colors. We have a separate angle, so we can change this to anything we like. If we want to have a slower rotation over time, uh, maybe we want to work with different phasing. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, this looks nice. Okay. Um, Maybe we can zoom in and out a bit. So how about uh, we have like a zoom factor, capital Z or uh, W. Um, and we have a zoom factor. So that will also be like a sign. So we will be replacing this eight by our zoom factor. So we just
do it like this. It still works. Uh, and now we put a zoom factor in here. So how about another sign? Uh, different than our angle, maybe even slower. So angle divided by five, for example. Uh, we had eight, so let's go between one and 16 or something like this. And it zooms in. Faster. Yeah, that looks nice. Maybe have it go a little bit further out as well. Maybe more full screen. And maybe um, multiply this as well. So we have different sizes of circles. Always looks sweet. Uh, slow this down a bit again. It's too slow. Yeah. I think this already looks pretty nice. So what else can we do? Maybe we can do a little, of, uh, little bit of uh, printing here. Um, so maybe we want to have uh, a little bit of build. So the way I usually do this, I have a, uh, I assign a variable to a part, which is usually time divided by something. So for example, I say P is time divided by integer divided by 32. And this will increase over time. Now for debugging, I like to print this number in the top corner. So I can see what I'm actually doing. Yep. So let's see how long this takes before it increases in value. There we go. So this is a new part. And wait a bit more. Yeah. So let's say we want to only show the size coding rules after part number zero. What we could do is do these, this if statement, but it's already, if P is, let's see if that works at all. Yes, it does. Um, we uh, could use an if statement like this, but what if we want to do uh, maybe another text as well? Uh, that's uh, going to be tricky, plus it takes up quite a bit of character. So what we can also do is um, have these texts uh, inside an array. So let's call this array. Uh, we call this capital T and we say T is size coding rules. Let's go back to this. It still works. Great. But we can also do different texts in here. So we make an array of different texts. Tick 80 size coding. And we put the rules in here. Yeah, make size coding. AD size coming and maybe stick an empty string in here as a first. So now we have four texts. Uh, nothing, tick 80, size coding, and rules. And now we can actually access this array. Uh, so indexing on Lua is one base. Why nobody knows, it's horrible, but uh, we have to live with it. So if you want to have tick 80, this would mean this is the second entry in our text. Let's see if this works, tick 80. Yes, it absolutely does work. Our texts are a bit smaller, so we can put this more towards the 100. 99. Um, and we can change what's in there. Now we have the counter called P. Um, let's go back here. You can see it's sort of a float still. Let's see if I can do 
P or 1 plus P modulo 4. So this would be either 1, 2, 3 or 4. Let's see if this works. Start with nothing. And we should go, yes, we should go to tick 80. Size coding. Oops. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, I will move this. Now we have uh, quite a bit of effect. We're at 286. So let's see if we can crunch this down. I really don't know, maybe. Um, so let's see what we can do here. Um, I just pulled this a code out of my ass, so I'm not sure if it is gonna be 256, but it will be a challenge, so let, let's try this. Um, so we have a sign function that is uh, reused quite a bit. So let's uh, assign the sign function to S, SSM dot sign. So let's see if that already works. Uh, this is our sign function. That works. That works. And this is a sign function as well. Uh, let's see if our code still works. Yes, it does. So we're now at 273. Uh, so what else can we do? Um, yeah, we can arrange the code, but we will do that later. Um, what we can do is uh, the cosine function is actually similar to uh, the sine function, uh, but uh, shifted uh, with 11. Y11, it rolls a couple of times over uh, 2 pi, and then 11 is a nice number that gives you like a 90 degree angle over uh, the sine function. So, let's see. Yeah, it still works, and we're down by two characters. So, yeah, maybe we don't use any other math function other than sine and cosine, so. How about we have a capital S, which we assign to mod.sign directly. And let's see what we can do here. Yeah, this will probably save us a little bit. So we do, we have our angle, so just Put this angle in here directly. I think it was t divided by five. And then our cosine is t divided by five minus 11. And then replace this for cosine, sine, sine, cosine. And this will be our capital S and we are 264 let's see we're using the A here yeah that's not really working let me see what's wrong uh-huh X that looks that looks okay um, We have a W, let's put this back to 8. That seems to be working. Okay. Yeah, maybe our cosine isn't working. So, ah, here we go. Yeah. Okay, that looks sweet. Yep, there we go. So we're back. Now we're at 267. So we're not, still not there yet. Uh, yeah, still working. Let's uh, do the T via 
normal addition like I showed before. Now we can stick T0 before the other T. And we're at 261. So we're almost there. Uh, we cannot stick this uh, here, unfortunately. Um, we can stick this one over here. This one here. Um, P cannot be stuck here, so yeah, we can stick the for loop over there. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's see if it still works. It does. Um, pop, 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 pop. Yeah, we're doing a multiple multiplication here. Mm. <laughs> yeah. P, can we use P directly? Yeah, I think we're only using P for a power counter, so we can should be able to stick it in here directly. Let's see if it still works. Just wait a bit for the first text up here. Yeah, that seems to work. 255, I think we've made it. So even room for this extra enter here. So thank you for joining me on my uh, little journey in size coding for the TIG-80. I hope uh, you've enjoyed it. Maybe you feel motivated to uh, either submit something to a future party or uh, maybe compete in the byte battle in the future. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.